Hi everyone. This is a part two of the video for the multi-group latent factor SEM analysis. In part one of the video, we completed the measurement phase for this latent factor model. Now it's a time to start the structural phase of the analysis. Open up the M plus command file for the final measurement model in which you should see the overall CFA structure along with the modifications you made to individual groups. Simply add the structural relations to the model section. Again, we start with an unconstrained model, but it is not necessary to repeat the lines for the model low add and model high add because Different from the factor loadings, the structural relationships are not set to be equal by the M plus default. Save the structural file and run. The model fit indices in the output file remain good, and there is no modification indices for on statements. Here we ignore those by and with statements because they are for the measurement phase and have already been taken care of. So this means we completed the step one for the structural phase. Both groups kept the hypothesized structural relations without making any changes. The model fit indices from the output file is for the unconstrained model and I summarized them here on the slides. To do a constraint model in step two of the structural phase, we need to repeat the structural relationships for the group models in order to set the equality constraint. Yep, I know it's confusing, but remember that we need to use numbers in parentheses to set equality constraint for pass coefficients. So we need to repeat the structural equations and number the corresponding parameters consistently to set the equality constraint. In my command file, I numbered the pass coefficient from internalized homophobia to attachment anxiety as one for both groups. So M plus knows that I want them to be invariant between groups. I did the same for the other two pairs of parameters. Save and run, and we have the constraint structural model. The fit indices are good. The model chi-score of the constraint model is 133.41 which is about 4.71 higher than the unconstrained model. This difference is not statistically significant given a degrees freedom of three. Since the two models are not different, there's no need to do step three. Also, there's no suggested changes for any on statement in the output file. This is the end of the structural phase of the analysis. We conclude that the structural relationships are invariant between the low ad and high ad groups. I would like to end the discussion with two additional notes. First, if you would like to obtain a test on whether a parameter is invariant across groups, you can request it in the M plus command file. For example, if I'm interested in testing whether the pass coefficient from the internalized homophobia to attachment anxiety is significantly different between the low ad and the high ad groups because their values in the unconstrained models appear to be very different, I can remove the equality constraint, rather name them as P1 and P2 and request a test by adding a model test section to test their equality. After I run the command file in the output file, in the middle of all the model fit indices, there is a part for the WAD test of parameter constraints. The test statistic is 2.858 
because it is for the comparison of two values, the degrees of freedom is one. Given a p value of point zero nine, which is greater than alpha of point oh five, we conclude that there is no significant difference in the pass coefficient from internalized homophobia to attachment anxiety between the low ed and the high ed populations. The second note is just a reminder. In M plus, the equality constraint is set on the unstandardized parameter values. The standardized estimates can still have different values for those groups, even when the equality constraint is enforced.